What's up Crusaders? Welcome to another episode of Arcade Crusade. In today's video we are going to continue the Whitewater Pinball Restoration. Uh, this video will be part four in the Whitewater Restoration series and we are going to pick up where we left off rebuilding the upper play field. So my new ramps just came in the mail so we're going to start with the new ramps. We got to put the new decals on them because they come without decals on them. Uh, we'll have to transfer the switches over and transfer you know everything over to the new ramps so do the new ramps first and then we can put the upper play field back together and that should pretty much be it for this one so we are over at the workbench right now and let me grab my old ramps and this bigfoot ramp was just completely cracked beyond belief just right at the switch gate they always break um disaster drop as well always known for breaking right where the switch goes so we got a new disaster drop and a new bigfoot uh the rest of them were actually in pretty good shape and i already cleaned them up with some novice and polished them pretty much the best i could so we will do um let's do the bigfoot first and we'll get disaster drop out of the way. I got a brand new plastic as well because mine's pretty yellowed right here. So I got a brand new um, guide plastic for Bigfoot. I guess this is in a separate bag. All right, so here are our new decals for the Bigfoot ramps. Probably gotta rip these open. this to the side so that's the first decal out and Bigfoot only has two decals so that's the second one out these actually look to be a little bit lighter than the originals luckily you won't really see that with the location where Bigfoot is at um, these I believe these ramps are made by Starship Fantasy, um, but I ordered them from Marcos because I knew shipping would be quicker from Marcos and cheaper. Marcos is actually pretty reasonable when it comes to shipping, so. Just move the big bag out of the way, and I mean, look at that. That is just a beautiful brand new ramp. So we'll do the decals first, and then we'll transfer over. We gotta transfer over the, um, what keeps the ball from popping out of the ramp switch here and a switch here for uh, Bigfoot. So we got to transfer over all three switches, but we can at least do these decals first. And I'm just gonna, I didn't really clean up the Bigfoot ramp because I knew I was replacing it. I only cleaned it up a little bit. So we will just put these decals on make sure they uh they are the right way yep just like that i'm pretty happy with that there so i'm just going to start there and just push the air bubbles out as we apply. And just slowly push it to the end. Yeah, this one's kind of in a weird spot on this curve here, and I, I know the next one's just gonna be as much of a pain, so I might only pull off like half of the 
decal there before I put it on, but just run your fingers over it, get it nice and applied. And that's actually pretty good placement for that decal. That looks pretty good, honestly. So brand new ramp, brand new decal. Decal's applied, good to go. Pretty much in the same spot as the original. Not hanging off the edge of the ramp, so it won't, you know, over the years, it's not, this decal isn't gonna fall off pretty good. Centered on there, the way you'd want it to be. All right, so that one is done. And now we gotta do this one. And this one, I think our main detail is the spacing from here. I think I'm going to peel off this bottom part first and get it stuck there. And then that way I can kind of get it exactly how I want it lined up and then just peel off the rest. So I'm just going to fold that one back like so. That's perfect. That right there is perfect. We got it perfectly centered. So all I'm going to do here is just apply the decal that I started so it holds in place. It's the same way that like uh, we applied the decal on the backboard of Twilight Zone. But I got a nice good adhesion here. We can just lift this decal up and pull the rest of it, well, at least to like here maybe, um, pull it off. So start where we left off and just slowly put our decal on. And I'm just pushing with my thumb here and just slowly putting it on. It sucks, I hate applying decals on anything that has this many bends. I wish these things would come with them applied, but then you get people complaining that they don't like how they're applied because some people are more particular about how their ramp decals are applied. So makes sense, but it is not fun to put these on. Slowly let it down and just try to get any air bubbles out. Air bubbles come out of these decals pretty well. You just gotta work with them a little bit. So just any air bubbles you see, try to work them out of the decal. And like I said, just go push all the air out. Make sure you got a nice clean adhesion wrapped around the edge of the ramp like so. And that looks, yeah, that's, that's a really nice, even application on the ramp that just looks really nice. There we go. So you can see both of them. New decals, new ramps, I mean, they'll, they look great. So I'm just gonna go through, push it, make sure it's nice and adhered to the plastic. If you were doing this on a ramp that isn't new, make sure it's nice and clean um, before you even think about putting these decals on. I'm 
I'm just trying to work out any bubbles that I see. All right, that's good to me. And now we can go ahead and just transfer these switches over one by one. Um, I'll start with the switch at the end here. And there it is, brand new on that, brand new entire ramp. Um, this thing is super clean. So new, so all the switches swapped over, brand new ramp, brand new decals. This can go to the side for now. And now we can do disaster drop really quick. And then um, same thing, luckily with disaster drop, we only got a couple, we got one switch and a couple decals. So this one should be, a lot quicker. So two decals on disaster drop. We may have to cut holes Oh no, all right, never mind. Holes are open on this one, so we don't need to worry about it. There you go, got the edge ripped off. All right, put that to the side. And this one, we can just do, this top one, we can just do by eyesight. And you really just want it to be even. with the holes for the screws here, so. It looks like this decal's a little bit bigger than the original is. Um, so we might have to trim it down, but I mean that right there is perfectly centered and I'll get my X-Acto knife and we'll have to probably trim this down because otherwise it's going to wrap. Yeah, this is not the correct size. It's, it's definitely too big. But I mean that is like perfectly centered between the screw holes just like how it is. Unless, am I one off? Should I be? No, those are the, the correct screw holes to be lined up with. 
yeah it wouldn't it wouldn't even go low enough to be lined up with the next set of screw holes and we are to the edge with the decal there it is actually just too big um so either we wrap it i guess i'll just wrap it no i think i'd rather exacto it i don't i don't want to wrap that but yeah so i guess the decals marco gives you for this not only is it the incorrect color but it also is too large for where it has to go compared to my original my original is definitely smaller width wise or maybe it's supposed to go no no definitely not i got it in the exact same spot this decal is just a little bit different from from the one from williams should be smaller Oh well, not the end of the world. Uh, reach over and grab my exacto. Actually, I'll just start right here and I'm just going to cut along the edge. All right, and that is a, I'm gonna come in a little bit more on the edge here. Maybe we'll get, yeah, we'll go to the top edge as well. some of the acrylic away we'll just make sure we got a nice even cut along the edge here all right and that is a nice solid even cut on that new decal um, not the end of the world that we had to cut it down, but now it's not going to get snagged up or anything. So that one's been cut down. While we're here, I'm just going to transfer the protector over, and then we will do the decal on the back side. And this ramp always gets cracked from the targets behind it, and the crack actually spread all the way up to, to here. So needed a new ramp for sure with this one So that is cleaned up with Novus, and now we will put it on. There's only one way it can go on. Might have to get different screws. It seems like the holes are too big. holes are so big they aren't like that on my original yeah I'm gonna need to get bigger screws so I'm gonna have to run to the hardware store that sucks I'm gonna have to get bigger screws for this because this does not fit so that kind of sucks but I'll leave that on for now and uh, yeah we'll put this back decal on the screws just fall out 
All right, I'm just gonna take it out. That's obnoxious. So I don't know if it's just this ramp or if they're all like that, but screw holes are uh, too big for our protector. So I'm just gonna put this aside. I'm gonna have to run to the hardware store and get the correct screws for that. And uh, now this decal needs to go on. And again, just peel the backing. And it's just gonna go on just like this. I'm just gonna loosely center it Put it at the correct angle. That's good, just like that. So I'm just pushing on it, making sure it's nice and solid on there. And that's pretty good. Look at the back side there, right where we want that decal to be. And now we can move our switch over. That's on nice and tight. That's also on nice and tight. So that is our brand new disaster drop ramp. And now you can see the decals kind of had how I had to cut off the edge there. Um, and there's the new decal on the ramp. It looks great. So the only thing was the uh, where's the ball protector is right here. The holes were too big for the screws that actually come on the game. So I'm gonna run to the hardware store and get bigger screw, bigger machine screws, or not machine screws, uh, sheet metal screws for this. So I'll get new screws for that. We don't need to do that on camera. It's just two screws we gotta put on for that ball guide. So that one is done as well. Uh, so now uh, let me just get my tools and parts out that I need to start working on the upper play field and we'll start reassembling the upper play field and go from there. All right, so I went ahead and I grabbed the spine chiller and the whirlpool ramp as we are ready to put those back on the upper play field now, now that we got Bigfoot ready to go and uh, everything else put on. So what we're gonna do is get our ball guide lined up right here and then the whirlpool ramp is just gonna slide in right here. And uh, we'll get a few screws started here. These were just wood screws. So we'll get these started loose enough and then we'll make sure that everything is nice and lined up. And with all these ramps, I um I cleaned them all, washed them with soap and water, and then cleaned them and polished them with some Novus too. So they're all in pretty good shape now. They aren't perfect, but they look pretty good. And the biggest thing here is you wanna make sure your ball guide, I'm holding it underneath the play field. You wanna make sure that is up against the top of the play field. So I'm pushing it against the play field here and just slowly tighten your screws here. That one's tight. That's tight, tight.
All right, now they're all tight and we have the Whirlpool ramp put on. So now we can go ahead and put the spine chiller ramp on and see what we're, don't wanna lean it that way if possible. So might have to do this one vertically and just kind of hold it in place or lean it back here if we have to. There. All right, so the spine chiller just went on with two screws and I have brand new screws for it because we were missing one of them. And one thing you want to make sure, and let me go ahead and zoom in. One thing you want to make sure of is when you install your cliffy on the upper play field right here, push it all the way to the edge because um, you can adjust it with these screws loose. So push it all the way till it's at the edge of the wood there so you don't end up with a gap between your plastic ramp and your, um, your cliffy. So it's very key to when you do that, you need to line it up. There we go. I can at least just get this screw started and now get this screw on the magnetic tip. And really the only reason I'm holding this up the way I'm holding it up is that um, I don't want to bend the pins on Bigfoot. want to make sure I have enough slack here. Let me loosen this a little bit. I want to push this ramp completely even on the edge here. Those are both tight. Let me make sure, I'm gonna hold this in my lap and just make sure we're good to go here. All right, and that should be in nice and solid now. So now we got both ramps. Let me zoom out for you guys. Oh, so now we got both ramps, Whirlpool and the Spine Chiller back on the game. Um, now one thing I wanna point out, so when you install this cliffy plate on the upper play field, um, it actually will cause the ball to have a bunch more backspin than it did when it was just on the wood. So um, the home remedy fix for that is you need to take four post rubbers. And I did clear tighten post rubbers. I cut them with scissors and I put them on the top of the up kick. So when the ball comes out, all the spin will be taken off after it hits these rubbers. And then your balls will feed nicely to the upper play field. 
yeah, we gotta shove this through like this with the big foot ramp and then get this out of the way. Uh, you need to get the big foot ramp and you gotta do it with the, the ball guide through. You need to get the big foot ramp under this ball guide here. Uh, you gotta slide it under and then you have to, um, you gotta have this basically inside this crevice here so that this can get leaned down and put in as well. Um, you gotta get all of that lined up. This out here has to be out of the way. Um, you gotta just come on top of the whirlpool ramp here. But the main thing was, I you gotta go under this ball guide to sneak this ramp in here. Uh, so now that I did that, uh, I ran my dual ball gate back through here. I took the sign off so it's out of the way. Uh, we can easily put that back on, but that was the easiest way to do that. And you just gotta push here and here and just kinda get the ramp to line up the way you want it to. Um, I got my screws here for the Bigfoot ramp. So I'll pour these out and it's just, one goes up here. I'll do, I'll get this one in first. Um, Cause once that one's in, it kinda lines me up with where this needs to end up going. So get this one started. Now that's started, get our ball gate out of the way and then we can put in the wood screws here. Um, and then once the wood screws are in, our Bigfoot ramp is on. Zoom out just a little bit. So I'm just getting these wood screws started and pushing the uh, ramp flap down as I put this in. And this thing is, is really like a maze to get this ramp back on. It is not easy in the least bit. So just go ahead and make sure you're tight as you put these in. So that's real tight there. Make sure the left side's tight and this one, the hole seems a little bit big. going in how much I'd want it to go in. Let's see if we can push it a little more forward so it actually gets in that hole. Take this one out completely. I think it was just how it was countersunk. That's fine. All right. Just go ahead and keep this straight as we line it up. And that is in nice and tight. Um, so now our ball gate is back on and the wires are fed just the same way that they were fed and when we took it off. Um, the left gate goes on the left side of the ramp. The right one, you gotta sneak it in behind it. Um, so it actually has to go on with the ramp. So I just snuck it back and then put the ramp on. So that's good now. Good and out of the way. Um, we are on here, so tighten that up a little bit and we'll have to get these two ramps together with the screws that they were that were there um, and then while it's still loose I'll get our upper vertical up kick ball guide on and I got the two screws for that
you just gotta kind of thread the needle here with this and I guess as long as that didn't break all right so now we got this leaned down um, we can just get at least the right side started for this up guide and then now you just kind of kind of sneak your screwdriver in here for this side hope you don't lose the screw and just kind of sneak it in there you really just want to make sure where the ball is coming out you're nice and centered that's the biggest thing I'm worried about here Pretty centered. I think I'd rather have it like this. So I'm going to tighten the top side first and then tighten down here. I'm going to get this nice and tight. nice and tight there our flasher is completely out of the way I gotta figure out how much that flasher was spun I think it was more like this way was originally yeah it seems about right for where it should be just like that so you just got to kind of spin it out of the way when you're Tightening this up, and then you can spin it back. So, I think where I have it is a pretty good spot. Um, so, now we get the two remaining screws to hook up the Whirlpool ramp to the Bigfoot ramp, which are just the two of these. So, we'll just get these started. And there may, I mean, I'm sure there's going to be some final adjustments needed as all of this comes together on the actual game. Um, I just wanted to make sure, I'll make sure this is in almost all the way. That's right, pretty good. Now we can get this nice and tight. We can tighten this up. We got big, we got smooth motion with Bigfoot here. He's not hitting anything. So that's another thing you got to watch out for. And Bigfoot seems smooth. So just uh, tighten this up. So we got the sign in place, ball guide can get mounted uh, the way that it should be. That is everything back together, um, completely 
cleaned up. Let me zoom out so we can get a nice view of everything pulled out of the game. But that is the entire upper playfield clean, wax, new Bigfoot ramp. Um, everything taken off and put back together. I got to put one flasher on the top right there. Uh, otherwise, it is completely good to go. So, um, yeah, I don't think there's really anything else we need to do with this except our new plastic. Not our new plastic. I did forget our plastic has to go back on. So let me get that. Um, so, yeah, this plastic will have to go back on. It's just two nuts there. Uh, once I make sure that everything is good and in place how I want it to be, I'll put that on. But just that plastic is the last thing that has to go on. Um, so yeah, that um, that's putting together the entire upper play field on whitewater. Um, it's kind of a pain the way that you have to put everything gets back together and get the ball gate behind this. And the up kicker has to like work its way around there. It, it isn't easy to put everything back together in the same order that you took it apart. But that is the entire thing back together. And now we're at a point that we can just go tear down the main play field, clean some stuff. Um, and then this game can pretty much go back together. We can start playing it. So just a few more episodes in the restoration series and we should be done. But uh, this wraps up rebuilding the upper play field on Whitewater. Uh, and the next one, we're just going to start working on the main play, play field. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.